All right, let's speak to Professor Mike Muller, a professional engineer from the Water Institute of Southern Africa and visiting um, adjunct professor at the uh, Witts School of Governance. Of course, um, always a pleasure to have you uh, with us here, Professor. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I think, you know, first and foremost, let's just start. I don't know if you've heard now, of course, um, what our reports about Fidele Morana were saying, uh, the situation in Hammond's Kral. Of course, we know that this is a situation that's been boiling up for years now. Um, but I think, you know, maybe just give us an understanding and explain to us the extent of which corruption basically um, and neglect as well, you know, have impacted the water infrastructure specifically, um, not just here in Johannesburg, but nationwide. Yeah, good evening to you and your viewers. Um, Baron, uh, you know, I, I'm afraid that every situation is is a little different to the other mm. so Haman's kraal is a case where we've had a long standing problem uh because the sewage works upstream of the water intake wasn't working properly so you had a, the the water supply for, for Haman's kraal they were trying to treat r almost raw sewage and that just wasn't working the situation in johannesburg is a a bit different and we can talk for a long time about why the Lesotho Highlands Water Project Phase 2 is about eight years late. Um, who caused that delay? I'm not sure that it's helpful at that stage because what we know is that for the next three years, Kalteng has got a certain amount of water available to it and the population, as we've been told today, is growing and we have to uh, work out how we're going to live with the fixed amount of water even as the population grows. The good news is that uh, because actually there's so many problems and inefficiencies, it should be possible to meet everybody's needs quite comfortably over those three years. But to do that, people and municipalities are going to have to start doing things differently. And we need to start having that conversation, not just what the municipalities must do. We know, fix the leaks. That's mm. a good start. Do the billing so people don't waste water without a penalty. But th there's also responsibilities on every householder, every business in Gauteng to do their part to keep enough water in the taps. Because if we work together, we can do it. I want to, you know, talk about the corruption issue when it comes to our water infrastructure. Um, like I said, not just here in Johannesburg, but nationwide as well. Earlier today, we heard from President Cyril Ramaphosa, and he wants um, the security cluster to tighten laws to protect water infrastructure, basically. Deputy Minister of Water and Sanitation, David Mashlobo, also, he warned um, that the tightening of laws to crack down on syndicates are, you know, destroying water infrastructure in the country, on the other hand, as well. But... When we talk about these syndicates, these criminal syndicates targeting our water infrastructure, how big is this problem essentially? And is this part of a greater and even bigger network of corruption that we don't yet understand maybe? I think we might have lost Professor Mike Miller there. Um, his signal was a bit shaky in the beginning already, so hopefully we can get him back a little later on in the show. Uh, but of course, you know, South Africa's water woes are uh, definitely something to, to be in the spotlight and that we need to focus on, um, like I said, not just here in Gauteng and Johannesburg, but in the whole country. But hopefully we can get uh, Professor Mike Miller back. Uh, Professor, um, if you can hear me now, I don't know if you heard my previous question, just uh, give me a signal there yes yes Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, uh, basically, we heard earlier today from the president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, um, he wants to tighten the security cluster when it comes to our water infrastructure, make sure that we have better security to protect our water infrastructure nationwide. Um, of course, we know that these criminal syndicates targeting our infrastructure is a huge problem in this country. And I wonder if this is maybe part of a bigger problem when it comes to corruption and the network is just so widespread that we don't even know the root cause of all of this. What's your opinion on, on that?
Oh. Yes, I think we do know that there have been problems of corruption in water projects where we're building things. And Royval is a very good example of a project that was heavily delayed, essentially because people were trying to steal money from the project rather than build it. I think there's less of a problem when it comes to the actual operation of the water systems. We know that in smaller communities where people have communal standpipes, quite often you'll find that the pipes get broken into, the taps get stolen for scrap metal. But those are smaller problems. I do think that we need to uh, all work together to stop people vandalizing infrastructure, but I don't think we have the same kind of uh, level of corruption, certainly not in the cities. In rural areas, it's very common to have pumps and motors stolen from boreholes, which are out in the countryside, protected. Really, we are not in, uh, as vulnerable as, as, say, the electricity sector with its cable. Um, and some of the other sectors, um, that's not our big problem. Our big problem is that we need to maintain what we've got and do the work properly, fix it properly, and use the materials we have properly. Uh, quite often we find that things aren't fixed because the material, and one of the reasons... There's no material. Is perhaps it's been diverted from the stores or from the back of the truck. Mm. Uh, those small that need to be managed. Yeah, they are not the cause of the current water shortage. Yeah, unfortunately, Professor, uh, we, your signal is still a bit bad on our side. Um, but hopefully, um, we can talk to you again at a later stage uh, when your signal is a bit better, so we can get a clear understanding of this um, water issue, of course, in, in, in this country, and, and to hear your opinion on it. But thank you so much for your time this evening.